I tell you, this has to be the year for old quarterback prospects more than I can recall in some time. And I understand that part of that is due to COVID and how it impacted the 2020 season and the NCAA allowed guys to get an extra year of eligibility and some guys took advantage of that, right? Came back and played. So they're a little bit older in some cases as prospects because they played an extra year. Understand that, like took advantage of the situation and opportunity that they had, made the best of a rough situation. Respect that. But my God, this feels like we're talking about post-World War II time where your prospects at the position are like 24, 25, 26 years old, like in the case of Stenson Bennett. I mean, we're talking about guys in their mid-20s versus most years you talk about quarterbacks and they might be 21, 22, maybe 23, a sporadic 24 here or there. If you got a bunch of guys this year, 24, 25, 26. This shit's just psychotic to me. But nonetheless, here we are. And I know that you look at a guy like Stetson Bennett IV and there's certainly a thought process there of he's easy to dismiss, a former walk-on, you know, he's a he's a short guy, he's pretty light, like played for a powerhouse team, but feels more like a Ken Dorsey type of college quarterback. You know, that you don't really project well to the NFL because you say, oh, he had so much talent around him. He just made some good plays and did some good things, but he was in a fantastic situation. How could he not succeed? I understand that. But as part of this process, you got to look a little deeper and see what does Stetson Bennett bring to the table in terms of projectable NFL skills. And I will say, like I was fully expecting to come and see a guy that I was like Jake Fromm from a few years ago, right? And if any of you that have followed me for a while remember, I called that crap. I said, Jake Fromm ain't got it. And I didn't know what the hell was so impressive. Was it the lack of arm strength? Was it the lack of accuracy? Was it the lack of great mobility? Like, I didn't get it. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't come away with some of those same feelings for Stetson Bennett. Now, I didn't see a high-level NFL starter caliber guy. But I saw a guy that, even though his draft grade you're going to look and you're going to see is probably similar to what Jake Fromm received from me a few years ago, you know, in terms of a talent, I thought Stetson Bennett was much better. It's just there are other factors at play that factor into that draft grading. Um, what you have to like about Stetson Bennett is he can extend plays with his feet. He's able to keep his eyes downfield. He'll get some yards as a runner. You cannot sleep on him there. You know, the old lazy kind of classic white guy, white athlete trope of he's got sneaky athleticism. He's got sneaky speed. He'll surprise you. <laughs> but, but he will, right? Now you watch those games that Georgia had the last two years. You're not anticipating him being as much of a scrambler, being as much of a runner as he is. Um, he's able to extend plays with his feet. He's able to improvise as a passer on the move, and he's actually pretty good at that. You would certainly hope for a guy that's under six foot, under, under 195 pounds. You better be able to freaking move. You better be able to throw on the move, and at least he can. He's also good at squaring up his shoulders well to the target when throwing on the move. Um, I came away thinking that his arm strength was going to be a total <laughs> like Jake Fromm-like, and that's not fair to say because it's not true. He can put some zip on the ball in the short area and to the intermediate range as well. Deep ball velocity, different conversation. But in terms of, you know, those quick slants, those, those quick hooks, you know, those stop patterns that you'll see guys run, quick crossers, like he can whip it in there. He certainly can. You know, the 10, 10 yard out, he can get it there quickly. Um, but... His velocity wanes once you get outside of like that 10 to 15 yard range. Um, he can though throw with some nice touch and anticipation on those deeper throws. Like he times them pretty well, puts the right amount of velocity, has to accommodate for that lack of pure pop in his arm and is able to do so. You also got to like about him, he does have lots of big game and championship experience. Played well in those games too. Um, you know, that's nice to be able to bring into an NFL locker room, especially if you're talking about a guy as a backup quarterback or a third-string quarterback, it's the type of guy that the moment isn't too big for him. 
So if you were in a situation, maybe you're in a game late in the season, you need that win, or you got a playoff game, and your starting quarterback's down, or your starting quarterback goes out, you know, you look at a Stetson Bennett and you say, he ain't great, but he ain't going to be intimidated by the big moment either. And you feel like you would have a chance with him. That said, though, how excited can you be about a guy that's going to be freaking 26 years old as a rookie? Furthermore, with all of that experience, you would think he wouldn't be such a laser-focused primary read guy, but he absolutely is. Now, granted, when you're throwing at guys like Bowers in Washington, it's a little easier to be laser-focused because those guys will get freaking open. Even if they're not, they're still freaking open. He's got a really bad habit, though, for a guy with as much experience as he has for staring down his primary option. And how much better is a 26-year-old rookie going to be able to get at that? I mean, serious question. He'll try to force the ball into tight windows, which he can sometimes get away with in the short area, but intermediate area, deep area, not so much. Sometimes his feet get stuck in the mud with this throwing motion. Like to me, you're not even six foot. You know, your arm strength's okay, but it's certainly not special. You need to really prop, practice proper footwork and proper mechanics. And sometimes his footwork is a hot mess and his mechanics are bad. And he'll be throwing off his back foot. He won't even be moving his feet at all. And sometimes that will affect both his accuracy and specifically his velocity. His ball placement on throws in the intermediate range, as I classify like maybe that 10 to 15, 10 to 20 yard range, and especially some of those deeper sideline patterns, it's hit or miss, could certainly be better. And I thought his general accuracy could be kind of up and down at times. It was just kind of a reflection of Stetson Bennett, right? Is he would have some really, really good games in some big spots. And then you get some other games, you're like, not so good. And that's kind of what he was. Um, it's just hard to really get excited for a guy like this. Stetson Bennett the fourth is short, he's light, and he's old as hell for a quarterback prospect in the draft. Right? I mean, that's what he is. Yeah, I'd have real concerns about a guy like him with that size profile, not only just the less than six foot, you can get away with that. It's the, he's not even 195 pounds, let alone 200 pounds. Like how well is this guy going to hold up? If Bryce Young's bulk and weight and build is a concern, then Stetson Bennett's absolutely has to be as well. And when you look at that combination of different factors, what value of draft pick can you really invest in Bennett and feel good about it? Because at this point, you would have to think, whatever he is, he is. And even with that, what is he? He's certainly not an NFL starting quarterback talent right now. Hard to see that he would ever be. He maybe could stick around and be an adequate to higher end backup, but that's it. Like some of the similarities I saw in his game compared to Baker Mayfield. They're not perfect matches. It's hard to find perfect matches when it comes to comparing prospects, but... You know, I always thought Baker Mid Midfield, as I call him, was overdrafted in 2018. Um, I don't know that Stetson Bennett IV is going to be overdrafted, especially because you might have some question about whether or not he is even going to be drafted. Now, you start getting into like that 6th, 7th round range, which is where I have his draft grade, I would start to say, you know what, there aren't a bunch of guys on the board at that point that are better than Stetson Bennett. They're not. Oh, but this guy's... A good athlete at his freaking size for his position. Yeah, but he can't fucking play. Like Stetson Bennett can at least play. His upside's really capped. And he's not that intriguing as a prospect, but you start getting to some of these late sixth and early mid seventh round talents like that feels like the right range for if you are going to invest a draft pick in Stetson Bennett, that's where you would do it. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he goes totally undrafted. I can certainly support that and understand that because the upside is just limited. Small ass 26 year old rookie with a so so arm, accuracy concerns, one read guy. Nah, not somebody worth pounding the table for. Not sorry, because it's true.